In today's video, I'm going to give you five steps on how to purchase your first property with a couple of tips before you even get started. Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki Butcher. I'm a real estate agent and investor in Columbus, Ohio. And on this channel, I talk all things real estate, Columbus, and lifestyle. Let's go ahead and get into the video. I have two tips before even getting started on purchasing a house that you want to consider. The first one is, do you plan on staying in that area for a long period of time? Or do you see yourself leaving in like two to three years? If that's the case, then it's probably not a good idea for you to purchase a house unless you want to start accumulating properties. What strategy I'm doing is I'm buying a house, like I bought my house last summer. I plan to live in it for a few years and then keep it, but rent it out and then move. So that's what a lot of people do if they want to be a real estate investor, but they don't really see themselves living in a certain area for five to 10 years. So they buy the property, live in it for a couple years, and then rent it out and repeat the process, which is a great strategy to build wealth long-term. However, if you have no intentions of building a real estate portfolio and you want to purchase a house, but you can see yourself moving in two to three years, then I would highly reconsider purchasing a property. Because if you're getting a loan on your home, you are mainly paying just interest for the first few years, if not like five to 10, I forget the exact math, but you're paying mainly interest in the beginning. So you're not really paying down the principal of your loan. So when you go to sell your house in two to three years, it's going to look like you owe like the same amount that you purchased it for. So as far as the selling costs, when you go to sell your property, you'll be lucky if you even break even. Unless if you're in a situation like some people were in 2019 where they bought a house and they sold in 2021, they were like well off because property values have gone up like 20 to 30%. So they were perfectly fine. They took away, you know, a significant amount of profit from that. But I would definitely not bank on that situation every year because most real estate cycles tend to take about seven years to kind of go in full circle. So that's why I recommend to my clients to have a long-term vision when they go to purchase a property. Plan on staying in that house for at least five to seven years, if not more, just to be safe. My second tip to consider before purchasing a property is to make sure you have enough funds available to be able to maintain the home. So that's what a lot of people don't really consider. You know, they consider the down payment, closing costs, and the mortgage, how much that is going to cost. But you have to think about how much it's going to maintain that property every single year. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, it's going to be hard to maintain that home and it might not be the best idea to buy a home. Usually people recommend around one to 3% of the purchase price of the house to keep aside for the maintenance. Starting off talking to a realtor is usually the best way to go because hopefully they should be offering to meet with you in person or via Zoom or on a call to give you a rundown of the buying process, how the market looks in your local area, and how that realtor is going to work for you as a buyer. This is what I offer all of my buyer clients, especially first time home buyers, it's important because I like to set them up for success before even starting looking at houses. I also think that this just makes you as a buyer feel more comfortable about getting started with purchasing a home. A realtor will also be able to connect you with a lender that they've probably worked with in the past, which brings me to step number two, which is finding a lender and getting pre-approved. It's super important to get pre-approved before you go out and actually look at homes because if we're looking at a $300,000 house and you end up only being able to get a loan for $250,000, then your, expect, your expectations are now at that $300,000 price point and you're going to be let down and disappointed because you won't be able to take any action on that house if you end up loving it. So that's why I like to have my buyer clients pre-approved before we start looking at houses just to set the right, right expectations from the get-go. Also, sometimes sellers are requiring buyers to show a pre-approval before scheduling a showing. This is more so for the higher price points though. But the market is moving very fast nowadays, so having a pre-approval ready before you even you know, walk that property, if you love it, then you'll be able to submit an offer, sometimes within hours. So that really helps your standing, and most sellers won't even consider your offer if you don't have a pre-approval. The pre-approval process really just involves the lender getting your tax documents, bank statements, 
um, any debts you might have and your income. I know it sounds scary, but it's just part of the process that you have to do in order to buy a home. So once they have this information, they'll be able to break down how much you're able to afford on a monthly basis and then what that will look like as far as the purchase price goes. And that will determine you know, what price range that we are looking in. One thing that you want to consider though is lenders are able to approve you for the max amount that you're able to go up to. But you want to consider your lifestyle. So you don't have to spend that full amount. And I recommend against it most of the time, unless if you have, you know, some streams of income that are kind of off paper. I tell people this because if you like to travel, if you like to go out to eat, if you like to shop, all those kinds of things, the lender doesn't take that into consideration. So you have to make sure you take that into consideration and set your own budget for what you want to spend on your monthly mortgage. And it's just unrealistic to say, yeah, I can do away with travel, shopping, eating out. That's just not realistic. I mean, I don't recommend you change your whole lifestyle just to be able to buy a house. I do think it's a great investment, but it's just unrealistic for you to change up your whole entire lifestyle in order to buy a house. Now, if it's just changing a few things, maybe taking a, a few less trips or not eating out as much, maybe cooking at home more, then definitely. I really don't think most people can change up their whole lifestyle just to buy a house. The third step is finally the fun part, which is house hunting. So once you've talked to a realtor and they've prepared you for the buying process and the market and then you have your pre-approval, you're ready to start looking at houses. The realtor will typically set you up on a search that will match most of your criteria and they'll send you those listings that pop up as soon as they come on the market. And of course, you will probably be searching all day on Zillow or some other third party site just browsing looking at homes. So what you want to do is start looking at, at as many homes as you can online. That's what I recommend to my clients to make sure they're not missing out on anything. And then break it down to which houses fit your criteria the most. And then send those to your realtor and say, hey, I want to see these. Here's my availability. And then they'll schedule those showings for you. Now you might wonder, how long does it actually take to purchase a house? This really, really varies. On average, I would say three to four months. That's what I've experienced. But I've had situations where we go look at one property, it's their first one that we're seeing, and we offer on it, which that is rare. You go look at one property, then you automatically offer on it. Um, but that instance, actually, it was accepted. So we only looked at one house, only made one offer, and we got it, and then we closed. And I've also had situations where I would be working with clients for six plus months and they would never be able to find something or they might just end up renting. Which both of these, I would say the first one is more rare. The second one, unfortunately, tends to happen a little more often. It just depends on where you are and what you're looking for. If, you're, if what you're looking for is very, very rare, then it's going to take more time. And if your expectations aren't really meeting the market, and it's hard for you to compete with other offers, then it's obviously gonna take more time as well. But on average, if you're a motivated buyer and you have realistic expectations, then it typically takes three to four months from looking at your first house and then closing. And don't beat yourself up because it is a hard market. So when you go to offer on something and you don't get it, it's totally okay. Many, many people are experiencing that nowadays, which brings me to step four, which is offering on a property. So once you've decided that you really love a house and you want to offer on it, then you'll either want to sit down or have a call with your realtor and discuss all the points to the offer. Typically what I do is when I'm in the buyer consultation in the very beginning is I give my buyers a buyer packet and in that buyer packet, they will have a sample of the purchase contract that we use here in the Columbus, Ohio area. I usually start all the important parts to the contract, which are the main parts that I'll be asking you as a buyer each time we offer, you know, how you want to structure that offer. Obviously, the whole thing is important, so I definitely recommend reading that. So that's why I give it to them in the beginning. So if they get bored one day and they just want to read the full 15 page contract, by all means, do that. But usually, giving them that contract in the beginning allows them to go through it. And then, if they have any questions about certain clauses, they can come to me with any questions and I'll get them answered. I also run through the contract when we're talking about offering on a property as well, just to make sure you know, they're 100% comfortable with what they're signing off on. But the main points of the contract that buyers will usually get asked each time they offer on something is obviously the purchase price, type of financing, inspection, remedy period, which is time after the inspection period that you have to negotiate with the seller anything that you want fixed that comes back on the report, earnest money, 
home warranty, and then closing and possession. And then there's also other clauses that you might want to add in, like escalation clauses or appraisal gap coverage. So depending on the situation, you'll probably have to wait 24 or I've seen three days to be able to hear back from the offer if they have multiple offers and have a certain deadline that they want to respond to by. So it's just a waiting game from submitting the offer and waiting to see who gets it. But depending on that, that brings me to step five, which is acceptance or just repeating the process. So if you get accepted, then that's amazing, but sometimes and a lot of the times that won't happen, especially on your first one. So you might just have to keep going out, looking at properties and offering. Those five steps are the key things to get ready to purchase the property. From starting with finding a realtor, a lender, step two, step three, going house hunting, step four, offering on properties, and then step five, which is being in contract. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. My at is Real Estate Nikki. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.